Oh, it looks like you're unmuted. Can you hear me? Well, hey, everyone, and, and welcome to Mental Health Mondays here uh, at Cathedral of the Rockies. I am uh, Buddy Gehring. I'm actually the pastor over at Twin UMC in Twin Falls, Idaho. You may recognize me because I've been working with Wayne for the past two years, and, and that's been kind of like a, a shared appointment type of situation over there. Um, and you might be thinking to yourself right at this moment, why in the world are we hearing from a pastor? We're talking about mental health. This is Mental Health Mondays. Why is it a pastor that's talking to us? And if that's the thought you had right now, I just want to say kudos, congratulations. You're thinking the right things, and I feel you. I'm on the same wavelength for, uh, with that sort of stuff. And so here's kind of just a backup on that. First off, it's really important that we listen to trained and licensed mental health professionals uh, when we're trying to learn about quality mental health care. It's also incredibly important that, that if we're suffering, if we're having a hard time or somebody we know is having a hard time, that we're willing to seek out help from qualified mental health professionals. And also, I think it's good for us to have a robust support system uh, in our communities from all different backgrounds. It's important for us to be able to lean into people uh, of all different kind of jobs and job descriptions. And, and we know realistically that there are still stigmas that people carry uh, about mental health and about getting uh, help for uh, mental health related issues. Some people don't feel comfortable seeing a mental health care professional. So if you are interested at all, maybe learning a little bit about this topic would be helpful for you. But hey, I'm not here alone. I've got a friend with me. Uh, Jake Ferguson is here. And uh, Jake, do you want to say hi to everybody? And, and just maybe introduce Hello, everyone. yourself. <laughs> hi, it's an honor to be here, to be here in my house talking to you, wherever you are. Um, I, uh, I've been in the mental health field for quite a long time in various different ways. Um, Buddy did mention uh, licensure and that I'm actually not licensed. However, I do have graduate level education in interpersonal neurobiology. And I also um, have done my, my trauma-informed professional certificate at the Berkeley Extension Campus in Berkeley. Uh, recently just did a year-long positive psychology certificate. And uh, as you can tell, I, I'm kind of crazy about education and mental health. I think there's a lot of good stuff out there right now. So I'm, I'm kind of just digging into uh, a lot of different areas of the mental health science that I find to be just incredibly valuable and most of anything hopeful. It's a very optimistic time for mental health sciences. Hey, Jake, thanks for, for sharing that. And we actually had a, another friend that had planned to be here uh, with us uh, on this call. They are a licensed counselor and they work in a lot of different uh, settings here in the Twin Falls area. They actually have a background uh, just like Jake in hypnotherapy too. And so it was going to be really fun to have three different perspectives to have this big conversation about mindfulness and the role that it can play uh, in our mental health journey, especially in a time like right now. Um, but kind of to illustrate that point a little bit, uh, he's not able to join us uh, because uh, he came down with COVID-19. We were originally going to record a few days ago, and when we were going to record is the night that he wound up uh, in the ER and in the hospital. So he's back at home, but uh, down and out, pretty heavy uh, with this stuff still and still battling. I know for me, I found myself this week being deeply affected by our third friend who was going to be in here, uh, his being diagnosed and his being hospitalized. That was a difficult thing. And not only was it difficult for me to get that phone call and find that out early Monday morning, but it wound up impacting the way that I moved through the world and the way that I interacted uh, with other people um, in ways that I wasn't really enlightened to. You see, we're gonna talk a lot about mindfulness and, and how to be present to this current moment. And mindfulness, I think we think about meditation and mindfulness as if it's this magic little treat that makes us feel better. It's not that. It's learning to pay attention and to be present to this very moment and see what really is. 
And uh, that's incredibly helpful for us because we know what's happening. We're suddenly in tune with what our bodies and our minds and our spirits are experiencing in this moment. And we're able to decide whether uh, that means that things are healthy or that means that things are unhealthy and there are some things that need addressed and need fixed. Uh, but it's not always comfortable. But the secret is whether we're paying attention or not, our minds are busy doing things. Whether we are tuned into this present moment or not, uh, whether we're saying to our brain, hey, could you pay attention to what you're doing? Or, hey, could you focus on this specific thing? Uh, whether we do that or not, our, our minds are busy running. And sometimes the less we pay attention, the more our minds run away, the more our minds run and obsess and focus on different things. I don't know if that rings true in your life right now. I know it has in mine. When I'm not paying attention, my mind can really chomp down on some unhealthy thought patterns and just get stuck in them and keep going and going. And there's a word for that in a, in a lot of these mental health circles, but interpersonal neurobiology, I think, specifically uses this term quite a bit. And that's the default mode network. It just talks about where our brains go when we don't give them something specific to do and we're not paying attention to what they're doing. So Jake, I'd like to kick over to you. And I think I was there some this week. Can you describe, man, what is this default mode network? What do our brains do when we're not paying attention and we just let them kind of run amok? Great. Many of us, we hear comments like, I can't get my brain to shut up or my brain's just chatty chatty all day long. And one of my favorite scientists, he describes the default mode network as the blah, blah network. It's just blah, 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 blah all day long. So the easiest way to summarize what I'm about to go into is a wandering mind is an unhappy mind. Okay, and that, that's what the science is saying. And the, the next interesting thing is that our minds are wandering easily over 50% of every day, waking hours. And whenever I say that in my small group work, people always say, more than that, more than that. Like, and it seems to be true. The default mode network seems to be focused on the future. It seems to be focused on the past. And it seems to give very, very little attention to the felt presence of now, your direct experience of the moment, moment by moment as you go. So not only is it largely focused on the future and the past, we could think really generally worrying and rumination. Um, it's, it's also not a place where we're getting into care and connect and where we're getting into these uh, more, more present states that what we call our affiliative states. Um, the default mode network is not an affiliative state. And, and I could go on and on about this stuff because I think the implications are huge and a lot of people are talking about it, but the brain also has an inherent negativity bias. In terms of magnitude, the brain is approximately 10 times more sensitive to what it deems to be negative. And it deems quite a lot to be negative and it's constantly looking for the negative. So we've got the brain, which is hyper vigilant, uh, looking for negative features around us looking for threat and just getting carried away with that. Yeah. And, and it, it seems so obvious, right? Because when our mind wanders, don't you feel this? Your mind goes either to the past or to the future. And then it focuses on the negative. It, it invents threats to see in the past and in the future. We've been talking about what our brain normally does, which I think is important for us to look at. Uh, but we're trying to give us uh, tools, we're trying to give all of us some tools uh, to slip out of that default mode network, the thing our brains spend all day doing, and to slip into something else, a more present, a more active uh, consciousness that is aware of this present moment. 
So here in Twin Falls, we've got a group called B. It's a group of people who get together and it's an open meditation group. This is a tool we created to help people step into meditation for the first time. At the top here, you'll see it says focus on one thing and you can do anything. Hand massages are great. Feeling the tips of your toes as you put your shoes on. You can do a lot of different things that help you focus and, and come into this present moment. But if you're willing, to set and, and, and hopefully set a specific amount of time, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it might be, and, and, and to try this out, um, the breath is such a helpful tool. So, so we often start with just feeling the breath as it goes in and out, just as the air physically touches the inside of the nostrils. And, and as we decide for five minutes, I'm gonna focus on one thing, our mind will wander. It's going to wander off at some point, uh, but at, at at the moment it wanders, we aren't gonna know right away, right? You're gonna start thinking about whatever that other thing was long before you realize, oh wow, I'm focusing on something other than the one thing I said I was gonna focus on. Mm -hmm. So the second step is our noticing the mind wandering. And this is the key point because this is when so many of us learn to give up on meditation altogether. We kick ourselves and we say, I failed. I did it horribly. I can't meditate. What's wrong with me? And that's not true. Uh, that's not the real story. This is the moment that you're really doing the work. Every time you notice that your mind wandered, you did the work. You learned how to be present. You, you succeeded at meditation. So that's where these things around the outside of the circle come in so importantly. We're going to move to that next step of returning the attention to the one thing we're focusing on, but we're going to do so lovingly, graciously, non-judgmentally, and gently. If we can treat ourselves with compassion and love and grace in this process of noticing the mind wandering and returning the attention gently just to our breath or whatever the one thing we're focusing on is, then we can get better at this whole process. But it's not going to work uh, if every time our mind wanders, we beat ourselves up for it. That's just not healthy. Jake, what would you say to everybody as, as we leave? What would be your invitation to them for this week? I, I love that you touched on that moment where you feel like you, you failed at meditation. It, it's, you could suppose you're sitting for a long time and you fall into default mode network activity for 20 or 15 minutes. That one moment that you notice it and that you come back is a joy. Mm. It's, it's a precious moment. And that's the moment that matters. So, and it doesn't matter if you have to do that a million times. It takes all of us, you know, we all have different learning curves. It takes all of us a different amount of time before you really start to deconstruct and dismantle the, the heavy operation of this default mode network. So make it a labor of love for yourself and, and understand that essentially the soil of the work is failure. That, you know, um, especially at the beginning, you're gonna spend far more time in the default mode network type activity than you will in presence, but it is worth it. It's so worth it. And you are worth it and our communities are worth it. And the type of people that are gonna solve the problems that we're facing are going to be people that are present mm. and compassionate. Yeah, yeah. man, that's that it right there. Perfect. You are worth it. It is worth it. Our communities are worth it. Mm -hmm. It's worth doing the work. Well, I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. And hey, we're going to be back next week, actually, in your feed. We had a kind of longer conversation. Uh, we we're recording it all at once, but we'll chop it up. And, and we're going to have another conversation uh, that, that really talks a little bit about something called accept, acceptance and commitment therapy and, and doing uh, the work of kind of distancing ourselves from our thoughts and our emotions when they rise. Uh, defusing is a, is a word for that. So be looking for that uh, in your in your feed next week for this mental health.